Fort Drum, when I got there, uh, I walked up to my unit and the first thing that was said to me was, oh, oh, you're, you're a female. I can see that. You're going to be going to the orderly room. That was the first thing that was said to me as soon as I got to my unit. I was PSC at the time. I was like, wow. Okay. I am Sergeant Ashley Blaze, and this is my story. Surprisingly enough, no one thinks about it, but I actually grew up in Florida. I lived there when I was born until I was six years old. My dad, my mom, my mom's whole family <laughs> with my sister. And then my, my parents actually divorced uh, when I was six. My dad didn't want to stay there anymore. He scooped up me and my sister. Mom stayed there We moved all the way up to Rhode Island where my dad was from. Uh, growing up, my dad always used to open up his old, uh, what was it called, the yearbooks from when, because he was in the Marines. He loved being a Marine, proud Marine. Always talked about it, always wore the hats, always wore the jackets, always telling us his stories. He always kind of gave us an insight on like, this is what I wanted to keep doing. He got out to raise me and my sister, which I really applaud him for. So it was me and my dad for, for quite a bit. Um, he always, you know, him being like a single dad raising me, he always wanted to be like, you, you gotta be tough. You, I mean, he didn't push sports onto me. He tried to do as much as the woman part of the job, like a, a mom's role in the job for me. But he always encouraged me. I'd be like, hey dad, I wanna, I wanna try soccer. I wanna try baseball. I wanna, I wanna be a cheerleader. I wanna go in that route. And he always was the coach for the team. I was doing it in. He was always or cheerleading. He was the coach of the football team I was cheering for. He was always right there to like help me out. So growing up, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be tough. Like I wanna be just like my dad. Like he, he was a Marine. He, I, I, even since then, I was like, oh, I guess like being tough. Like I wanna grow in that aspect. But even growing up, he also said that I want more for you. I will, I don't want you to directly go. If you wanna join the military, I'm all for it. He told me his stories. I don't want you to lean toward the Marine Corps. Uh, he didn't really want me to join Army uh, Marine Corps because for him that was super populated man culture. And really, especially when he was in the Marine Corps, he never really mentioned or even when I went through his yearbooks that there were any women in the Marine Corps. So I thought the same way with the Army because when you think of Army, you think of oh, the infantry, they're all going down, they're getting shot at, they're doing combat related things, so you don't think that women join there. So the time my dad that I wanted to join the military, he was like, oh, well maybe you should join the, the Air Force and the, the Navy. He's seen more women in that aspect because he was, he was worried for me. And at the time I was kind of concerned, I'm like, what do you mean you're worried for me? Um, the, you're safe in the military. You don't have nothing to worry about when you're in the military. And he started telling me about some things that he would read about, about um, cause at that time, sexual harassment and SHARP was new coming into the military programs to help prevent it. I mean, for me, I was like, dad, I mean, no, I'll be fine. I'm gonna be, I'll, I'm gonna be tough. Like no one's gonna bother me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick their butt. Like you don't have to worry about it. But he, he, was, he didn't want nothing. I mean, I was his baby girl. He didn't want nothing. He, so he really pushed me into wanting to join the, the Air Force and the, and the Navy. I think it was around March at that time of 2014. He's like, well, okay, we can ship you out in July. I'm all for it. Let's go. I'm super excited. That, that was honestly like the best moment of my life. I didn't think I was actually gonna be able to do the thing that I wanted to do for so long. And then I was gonna be left with, what's my options now? I can't go to college, I can't afford that. I'm not gonna let my dad pay for that. No one else is gonna pay for that. So I, I'm, I was really uh, generous with, with my uh, army recruiter, <laughs> that guy until his day. I don't talk to him anymore, but he's my best friend. And I hope, I hope he knows it. When I was in basic training, our drill sergeants told all the females, you're not going to let your hair down in front of any of these men. If your hair gets messed up, you're going to go to the bathroom and fix it. You are not going to look feminine. You're not going to smell pretty. You're not going to doll yourself up. Who are, you, who are you looking pretty for? No one. Everyone, so I was like, okay, <clears throat> I have short hair. I don't have to worry about it. No one's going to mess with me. I'm going to you know, be tough. Like I'm just going to stay low. I'm not going to talk to anyone. Even if I see him, like, I'm not gonna even acknowledge that it's happening because it's not happening. Because if it's happening, then my dad was right. And then I, I didn't want my dad to be right. I wanted everything to be okay. I never once like had any doubt 
I remember it was like our last rook march. I think it was a 12 mile rook march. I'm killing it. I mean, I'm, I'm like rocking along. I'm, oh God, I, <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna make it. But in the back of my head, I just remember my dad like, you're gonna do it, you're tough. Don't give up, just keep going. And I did, and I remember when we finally got to the end, they had all these strobe lights and all these lights. And I saw it and I, I broke down crying, I'm like, this is it. I finally made it, I'm not, I'm not going back now. I finally officially made it into the army. I'm in the military, like, this is my life now. I'm so happy for it. Everyone else, you know, oh, thank God, you know, this rough march is over, but me, I'm like, I finally did it. This is all I ever wanted. It was great. That was the first thing they told me, you're going to Korea as your first duty station after being away from home for probably about like six months now. You're going to Korea for Christmas. My report date was two days before Christmas. So you have all these group of people in processing with no one else there. Everything's all quiet and you're you know, exploring the country. For me, it wasn't too bad because like I said, I grew up in middle schools where the diversity and the culture was so expanded that I was used to, I was comfortable for it. I didn't really have any friends. Um, the only time I actually like decided to branch out of myself and make friends, I had some people, hey, um, hey Blaze, you know, come hang, you know, hang out with us. We're gonna like all get together and hang out in the barracks. I was, I was really nervous, but I was like, you know, okay, I was kind of feeling depressed. I didn't have no one to talk to. I had my dad, but you know, it was like 14 hour difference. So I was like, sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out with, hang with you guys. That sounds great. Uh, we hang out in the barracks uh, and they started bringing soju. And so that soju is the liquid, liquid love of Korea. You can't taste it apparently. And sure enough, you can't taste it because apparently I drank some and I woke up in my room with someone banging on my door. Blaze, we need, we need to talk to you about a sharp incident. I was like, oh, a sharp incident? This is news to me. I, to my knowledge, I've been sleeping in my room the whole night. And sure enough, I guess they, I guess I passed out wherever we were all hanging out and I was left in that room with two other males and I don't even remember that. And in my knowledge, I feel like nothing had happened, but I was freaking out because everyone else was freaking out. I was like, wow, I let myself you know, come out of my shell to hang out with people and they all betrayed me and they all bet betrayed my trust and whoever else was in there just left me like that instead of bringing me, for, I don't even know how I got back to my room, but they just left me there. So ever since that incident, I kind of went back in my shell. So and when that incident happened in Korea, if there was an incident, because I don't even remember, I was like, wow, this is this actually happens. <laughs> this is actually a thing that happens in the army and I really didn't want to believe it, but it is something that happens and it's something that no one thinks that, oh, it's gonna happen to you one day. Or even if it did happen to me, I don't even know, but it's a problem. I didn't believe in, in Sharp. I always believe that like, you just need to tough it out. Like don't, don't let it bother you. Like, oh, that comment bothers you, tough it out. You don't need to bring that up because now you're just ruining that other person's life and he was just trying to make it a joke or he wasn't he didn't mean it like just i thought i was sharp was a, a woman's problem that they just had to deal with themselves that's how i always progressed it as and even until not so much recently but when we had the women's group talk that we had at hawaii all the women in the unit got together and talked about their problems like wow a lot of these women have the same problems are the same things that I went through when I was in Korea and other people that I've heard and they're actually it's an it's an issue and if all these people like have an issue with it that means not everyone thinks the same way I do and that just really took me through a loop that really spun me around because like okay it's not doesn't need to be a man's world no more it doesn't need to be all men you need to blend yourself in no it's it's the military is for us it's for everyone. Everyone cohesion together the same way. But if you have issues, it's okay to say it because if not, if you don't say and you don't speak your change, it, everything's just gonna stay how it is. And it's not like, that's not how we work. We can't work like that together. So after the six months, I ended up going to Fort Drum in upstate New York. Everyone they go to Fort Drum, yeah, it's gonna be great. We're gonna go to the city. Fort Drum, upstate New York, is like seven hours from New York City. There is nothing up there. <laughs> Fort Drum, when I got there, uh, I walked up to my unit, and the first thing that was said to me was, "Oh, 
oh, you're, you're a female. I can see that. No, you're going to be going to the orderly room. That was the first thing that was said to me as soon as I got to my unit. I was PSC at the time. I was like, wow, okay, who's your EO rep? I was not, stand I did not, I didn't pick my job to work in the office. I didn't, that was not, I mean, I, I tried my best to like look like the men, like not act like the men. And even still, they were like, wow, you're going to, you're going to stick me in the orderly room. That's what you're going to do to me. <laughs> And that wasn't happening. I talked to my EO rep, and I was like, how come all these females are going to, to the early room? And sure enough, like the one, I was one out of five females at the time in that unit, another BSB. But they were sticking all of them in the early room, and none of them ever said anything. And that, that was offensive to me, because I'm, I'm here to work hard. I wasn't here to just do paperwork, and, you know, that, that, that wasn't me. So I, I talked to EO rep. It was the first time he heard about it, and sure enough, it didn't happen again. So I, like, that's the whole important thing about, like, you don't, you don't like something, you got to do something to change it. And I changed it. They didn't stick me in the orderly room. I went to my unit with the BSB, did my fueler things, and that, thinking about it, like, really upsets me still. How they just, like, the first thing they see, little PFC. Oh, you're going to work in the orderly room. No, that's not, that's not how that's going to be. Future opinions on females joining the military, I feel, I feel hopeful. I feel hopeful on it. A lot more women coming in speak their own minds. They're, they're tougher than how women really used to be. Main thing is like women aren't, we're not entitled to anything. We're not, just because we're women, we're not going to get, like we're not going to get special treatment. We're not going to get this. So it's peop especially people coming in need to have that mindset. Like you're, just because you're a woman, you're not entitled to anything. So I believe now it's, we're hopeful, we're going up, we're getting better. We have some personal experience, some women have some things that they need to have reality check on as far as entitlements. Everyone's here to do the same job, we all wear the same uniform. We're here to serve and die for our own country.